Welcome back to another Dream Rides with the Bike Specialist here in Sheffield. James, good to be back. Oh, fantastic to be uh, all part of it, guys. Now, this one, this one's pretty interesting. So this week we're gonna ride, I'm sure you can tell, it's an Aprilia RSV 1000R Millet, or a Millet R. It's a good one, this, isn't it? It's a little bit of a underappreciated bike. Very much so, yes. Colin Edwards rep. This one in yeah, particular. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very rare, this one. 461 ever made, and it's an Italian exotic yeah, at its finest. That's the bit that, that gets me with this, is it's, it's a properly exotic Italian superbike. It's covered in carbon fiber. It's a phenomenal bit of kit, and it doesn't seem to hold the same kudos in people's minds. No, it's very underrated. 998. Yeah, but I think people are like really starting to know that now, uh, and the prices are obviously are going higher and more desirable than everyone appreciated. This particular bike is a 2004, it's very low mileage, it's only done 3,800 miles, but the thing what really made these bikes was the 147 brake horsepower, uh, which you can imagine of, it's a big V-twin as well, so it's like super powerful, big FUD, FUD, FUD bike to ride, uh, compared to obviously the, the equivalent bike would have been the R1, and it's the same kind of brake horsepower. 185 kilos, that's all it weighs, and that's thanks to a lot of the carbon uh, body panels, you've got a top speed of 176 miles an hour. Uh, you've, the spec on these bikes are really high as well. It's got Olin's front and rear suspension, Acropovic exhaust, uh, race ECU chip on it as well, uh, close ratio gearbox. Uh, gosh, it just, the list just goes on. They're bigger very bodies. Great, bigger throttle, throttle bodies, carbon air box, pressurized air box as well. They're it was a real a, step up, wasn't it? The R from, massively, yeah. from the base model bike. Yeah. Obviously, the who, it's, a, it's a who's who of posh bike components this yeah, thing. That's right, yeah. You know, the other one, the only one you didn't mention. Oh, the, gonna, can... uh, yeah. <laughs> the OZ uh, aluminium forged race wheels. Which yeah. in Which that kind of matte blue, blue are really suits the bike. Gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous things. <laughs> These things, I can remember them coming out. You know, I was just about the point where I was getting my moped and yeah. riding to all the bike meets and cafes and stuff. And these were always around. When I started racing, there was a one make championship for the Melee. And I just remember them sounding terrifying. Yeah. And they were brutal bikes. They had more torque than any other sports bike on the market for a good few years after mm. they stopped production. They were just a powerful, loud, angry brute of a thing. And I was always in awe of them as a, as a teenager. They do sound absolutely awesome on road. I'm particularly not keen to take it out when it's like this. We're you can hear definitely the rain, not taking it out in this rain. <laughs> I, it's daft things like obviously 147 horsepower, over 100 newton meters of torque, and I'll show you in a bit. But the throttle on it, the, it quick action throttle doesn't even come it close. It literally, literally that half is the full turn, throttle. Yeah, that's it's, right. It's just bat straight away. So stuff like that with so much torque and such a an angry bike, properly excited to try out. Aprilia side of the V-Twin Superbike story tomorrow. Right, normally I can't get much past James when it comes to questions on these bikes. Are you trying to call me a bike nerd? You are a massive bike nerd, <laughs> you're worse than me. So I've got a few, a few little questions. I don't know if you can see what's hidden over there, but that is a Millet SP. So the Millet R Colin Edwards rep was one of the rarest and most special, but the homologation special for racing. Yes, SP. Really SP. SP stands for? Sport Production. Good and man. this one has been bereaved on by Cosworth Racing. What was the difference with the Cosworth engine? Uh, short stroke. It's only because <laughs> you overheard me talking about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, so that one had a short stroke engine to get more revs out of it, again, to make more power mm. for the World Superbike Championship. Correct. How many World Superbike Championships did they win? Oh, you've got me on this one. Go on, was it? With, with the melee, with the With the melee, uh, was it three? Come on then. None. 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 <laughs> they didn't oh, win any. Me. <laughs> they you really had me here in front of the camera. They had a third place with, I think it was Corsa got third in the championship okay. on it. I'll but, ask you a question then. Go on. What do you think the price difference is in these two? What, here and now? Yeah, here and now. What, what, makes, the, what makes this one behind me so much more money than this one? Because they made even fewer of them. That's right, now we need to make. Either 150 or 300, I can't remember what the homologation rig was. Less than that. Ah, oh, yeah, they were yeah, supposed to have made. That. And how much do you think this one is behind me? 20? Uh, no. Go on. Double. 40 grand. 40,000 pounds. No yeah. way. That's what they've gone up to now. And this particular bike is 13,000. Yeah. So there's a massive price difference. Even though that is limited edition, this is super rare. Oh, Sport well. production. There we go. That's why I'm riding this one. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs>
listen to that engine. This Aprilia has been a massive surprise today. I really expected it to be a big lump of a thing, awkward and long. And I couldn't have been more wrong. I <laughs> could not have been more wrong. When you sat on it, the tank is so sculpted out between your legs, it feels tiny, it feels skinny. The seat's quite flat, but it feels like a really small bike between your legs. It's reasonably long reach to the bars, but they're kind of, they're not tucked in in like a really skinny one, two, five way. They're quite wide and flat, which makes for a really fun riding position. Not one you'd want to spend three hours on the motorway on for sure, but actually really nice to ride. <laughs> so along with these bike specialist videos we've partnered up with bmoto for a little bit of useful motorcycle cover for insurance purposes bmoto actually do cover for bikes that are laid up so if the bike's sawn and stored in a glass case in your living room or whatever track day policies multi-bike policies motocross bike policies they've got a huge range of different insurance options and my favorite feature, given how often I change bikes, is that you can change your bike or change the details of your bike mid-term, add a modification, change the address, and they don't sting you with that annoying 40, 50 quid mid-term adjustment fee, which I've got a lot of time for that. So well worth a check out if you're getting your insurance sorted sometime soon. If you want to see more videos of us riding mad, cool old stuff like this, hit the subscribe button down below press the little notification bell and you'll get a heads up when we've got our next one dropping because we have got some absolute crackers in the works on dream rides. But today it's all about the Aprilia RSV Mille Edwards replica. I'm beginning to worry that I don't know anything about motorcycles. More and more when I ride these dream bikes, they're kind of not what I was expecting. Not, not the riding experience or not the power delivery. And I think that comes from reading old magazine tests when I was a kid and building these bikes up in my head. And then when you ride them, they're always slightly different to how I've imagined them. This RSV falls strongly into that category. When I first got to ride this this morning, I was really nervous about it because 147 horsepower V-twin, the look of it, it's a big brutish looking thing. It looks like a big lump of a bike. It looks like it's gonna be awkward, long, and really aggressive on the throttle. That's, that's how I pictured it. The reality, for me, felt more akin to riding Aprilia's little RS125 two-strokes or the RS250 two-strokes. It felt, felt like a big version of them rather than this great big slab monster of a bike that I thought it was gonna be. Everything's nice, you know, the, the front brake's really light. There's loads of feel through the lever. Good power through the discs, but good confidence in the brake lever. The clutch is reasonably heavy, but it's not grabby. It doesn't snatch or do anything awkward. It pulls smoothly. The fueling's beautiful for such a big V-twin. You know, that's now nearly 20 years old. The fueling was really, really crisp on it. The gear shift is so precise. It just clicks between the ratios in a way that means you don't miss the fact that there's no quick shifter. Stuff like that just makes it easy to ride. We got out in the first set of bends and it was like, wow, it, it turns. It, it's, it's not this long, long laid out slabby thing that you might think it is. It steered really, really well. Flicking side to side took a little bit more effort than you know, you used to with modern bikes, but once you'd got the thing picked your direction and turned it, it just sort of carved its way through the corner. Several times when I first hit the corners, I was picking up because I'd gone into the apex too sharply. Really, really impressed with that. And it's something that reminds me of the RSV4. I've got a lot more experience riding the modern RSV4s. This thing, yeah, you can see why the RSV4 is so good because they've started from a really good place. This melee is a lovely thing to ride. Now in terms of power, we did find out that some of them are restricted. So some of these melees have like a throttle restrictor in them that stops the throttle turning far enough to give you full power. It's removable, don't worry. But the way this bike makes its power is so smooth. It's not a lumpy, bumpy, shuddery bike. Obviously I'm gonna compare it to the Ducatis here because they're a similar ilk, a similar era of bike. The Ducatis, when you get them right down low in the rev range, down to sort of 3,000 RPM, they're chug, 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 but yeah, they don't like it. They want to be revved and they want to run a bit, a bit higher RPM. This you can roll right down to 2,000 RPM 
and then pick the gas back up again and it's silky smooth you know it's a v-twin it's obviously nothing like a four-cylinder bike but it doesn't shudder and shake it doesn't flap its mirrors it just pulls cleanly you know right down to 2000 rpm there and it pulled cleanly no no shaking or protest and it makes riding like a long flowing set of bends really really enjoyable rolling on and off the gas being lazy with the gear shift if you want and just that along with the good front end and the good brakes made it a joy to ride this thing is as much fun to ride on the road as the honda sp1 that we rode recently and i never thought i'd be saying that it's a phenomenal bike i'd love to try one of these on track because that front end is so addictive on the road i feel like on a racetrack it would just be a you'd feel like you're riding not a big Vita bike i think you'd feel like you're riding a really really fast 250. that's how it feels in my head and then that gets all brilliant old fantasies of watching two-stroke 250 gp bikes with danny pedrosa and people like that on it's a very emotive thing and I'm sat here with a carbon fibre mudguard and Aprilia racing sticker in front of me. It takes a lot of those emotional boxes for me. I'm baffled. I'm baffled as to why these don't have the popularity of the Ducatis. Maybe it's the styling. Maybe it's how beautiful that 916 era Ducati was. This isn't necessarily beautiful. It's quite a brutish, bold looking bike. But if we're talking about pure riding experience, this is every bit as enjoyable to ride as that 998R that we kicked this series off with. And that's a surprise for me because 998R is Chris's unicorn bike. That, that is the one for me. And I never thought I'd enjoy this as much as I did the Ducati. And when you consider these are half the price of a Ducati, it makes you wonder why, why I would buy a Ducati and not buy one of these. So on that bombshell, <laughs> to, to steal a well overused phrase, I'm going to go and do some long, hard thinking to myself. But if you're in the market for a big V-twin, between this and the SP1, I think the SP1's got a few more niceties around town. This has got a little bit more emotion, a little bit more chassis and steering out in the lanes. These are two very underrated bikes that will give you a fantastic riding experience if you want a usable classic.